Will the Senate please come to order? Will Senators, staff, and guests in the gallery please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance? Today's invocation will be offered by the Chaplain Colonel Galen H. Meyer, U.S. Army, retired, retired teaching pastor at South Christian High School in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The pastor is the guest of the Senator from the 28th District, the Honorable Senator Mark Jansen. Pastor. Let's bow in prayer. In this Memorial Day service 2013, we lift our hearts in prayer to you, our omnipotent creator and heavenly father, who imagined us, brought us into conscious being, and loves us more deeply than we can know. Hear our petitions this day, we pray, those we make together and those we express individually in the quietness of our hearts. We remember with sorrow and respect the courageous men and women of our country who sacrificed their lives in opposition to tyranny and evil that we might be free. Give them rest for their souls. We pray as well for those they left behind to mourn their absence. Parents, spouses, children, siblings, extended family and friends, bring comfort to them, we pray, and the peace that surpasses understanding Hold them gently and securely in your arms of grace. We pray as well for all those men and women who suffered debilitating wounds from their service to our country. Be their great physician. Give them relief from pain and anxiety. Fill their hearts with renewed hope, courage, and vitality. Remember, too, their loved ones who care for them. Give them strength patience, wisdom, and love day by day to carry on. We also remember in prayer today the men and women in uniform who presently protect our country. Keep them vigilant, strong, and safe. Protect them from all evil. Watch over as well their families and loved ones who worry over them and also serve. And finally, we pray for all of those called to positions of leadership in our state and country. Give them an extra measure of understanding and insight. Help them to weigh each issue that calls for their attention with calmness of mind. Equip them to make each decision wisely, that we may be led in the paths of peace. We make our prayers with assurance that he who created the ear hears us and with conviction that the God who is love will fulfill his promises that one day the old order of things will give way to the new heaven and new earth when he will wipe away every tear from our eyes and there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. Amen. Now I have our Pledge of Allegiance. Just find the flag up above. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the 19th Annual Senate Memorial Day service. I'd like to welcome our guests in the gallery as well as the guests on the Senate floor. For those of you who haven't previously attended this service, the Senate Memorial Day service was started in May of 1995 by then State Senator, now Congressman Mike Rogers, a former Army officer. The ceremony was intended to remind citizens of the sacrifices made by fellow Americans. In 2003, my former colleague and friend Valdi Garcia, who is with us today, volunteered to carry on the tradition of this event. Today I have the honor of carrying on this tradition. This service is an opportunity for us as senators to show our gratitude for those who left behind friends, family, and the comfort of home to defend our principles of freedom and liberty. 
I now ask the guests on the floor and the gallery to stand for the positioning of the colors and remain standing for the singing of the national anthem. Please post the colors. I'd like to welcome representatives Kenneth Kurtz, Edward McBroom, Earl Pileski, Al Pasholka, Pasholka, and Mike Shir Shirky, who will be singing the national anthem. And for the first time, the House has joined us in this ceremony. And we've enjoyed working with these representatives. And again, welcome to the Senate chamber. Uh, guests, uh, <clears throat> Oh, 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 oh,
Representatives, thank you. I got to tell you, if I had a voice that good, I wouldn't talk to anybody. Uh, if everyone will uh, guests be seated. Uh, veteran Services Organizations, please stand at ease. And uh, guys, remember, don't lock your knees and wiggle your toes. We're going to be here for a while. At this time, I need to recognize some guests on the floor today from the Michigan Department of Military and Veterans Affairs. I ask that they please stand when I call their names. Adjutant General, Major General Gregory Vadnay, he's sitting with Senator Molinar. Brigadier General Mike Stone, sitting with Senator Knopfs. Jason Allen, former senator and senior deputy director for veteran affairs, sitting with Senator Kahn. Jeff Barnes, director of the Michigan Veterans Affairs Agency, sitting with Senator Jones. Jim Dunn, Chief of Staff to the Senior Deputy Director for Veterans Affairs, sitting with Senator Mikoff. Colonel John Wojcik, General Counsel for the Michigan National Guard, sitting with Senator Brandenburg. Command Sergeant Major Daniel Lincoln, sitting with Senator Rocca. And Colonel Jack Leask, Army Chief of Staff, sitting with Senator Richardville. We thank you for being here today and appreciate all you do on behalf of the Michigan National Guard and our Michigan veterans. Applause is fine. I'd also like to recognize my personal guest that has joined me on the floor today. Nick Dragon is president of the 25th Division's 3rd Brigade, Charlie Company, 3rd of the 22nd Bata uh, Battalion. He and I served together in the same brigade uh, on my first tour. Welcome, Nick. This year's and past years, we're honoring those who have fallen since our last memorial. We're also honored to have a wounded veteran share his testimonial with us today. It is important to bear in mind that numerous soldiers and veterans have had their lives altered by injuries sustained during active duty. For those who have served, some gave all, all gave some. <coughs> Excuse me. In times of war and peace, there are soldiers who do not come home. Soldiers who come home injured. And soldiers who uh, come home apparently untouched. Uh, our time today is dedicated to recognizing and honoring those that have played a part in keeping our great country secure from those who would undo our system of government and the freedom we enjoy. Before we hear from Staff Sergeant Mills, I'd like to take an opportunity to recognize a Gold Star mother who had three sons serve in, in Vietnam. 
One son, Thomas Smith, an Army Ranger, <coughs> serving in, uh, was serving in Viet Vietnam. Both of his older brothers also served. One in the Army, one later became a Naval officer, and one in the Marine Corps. Uh, Tom was killed while serving as a team leader in the Rangers H Company, uh, part of the 1st Cav Division, at the age of 19. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, he was awarded the Bronze Star, the Purple Heart, Combat Infantry Badge, the Vietnam Cross of Gallantry. Uh, Thomas is survived by his two brothers, a sister-in-law, a niece, and his mother, Anna Laura Smith. Today, Tom's nephew, also named Tom Smith, will read a poem written by Specialist Smith while he was in Vietnam. And Tom is a member of the Senate. Uh, Tom? Oh, sorry, Tom. Thank you. Step up, my friend. This poem was written by my uncle, Thomas Smith, who I am proud to be named after. I ask not, Lord, to be big and strong, nor do I ask to be always right and never wrong. I ask for no bands and cheering crowds, just for you and me to know I'd be mighty proud. I know things my friends back home don't. I pray they'll never have the need and won't. I've seen men suffer. I've seen men die. Oh, God, must they and why? Please send down a helping hand and help people understand if I don't make it back to my homeland. I ask this not for me, but so God's people can be free, so there can be love in our world and the flag of peace can be unfurled. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Tom is a member of Senator Boer's staff. I understand your uh, grandmother <coughs> uh, couldn't be here with us today, so please accept this Gold Star license plate. Thank you so much. Some of our guests here today are uh, Gold Star family members. I ask that if you are a Gold Star family member, please stand so we may show our gratitude. I'd like now to share excerpts of a composition by J. Wesley Benedict entitled The Last Ga Camp, which was written to commemorate the lives lost during the Civil War. The author's granddaughter and great-grandson are with us today. The composition's content still serves as a representation of military personnel past and present, a present who helped defend our nation. And this is an excerpt of a, a longer rendition. We have met in the camp where our heroes are resting, who stood by that flag that floats o'er their graves. Though their faces are hid, we shall never forget them. Now our voices keep silent in accents of praise. How ready and willing when the nation was calling, they put on the armor the Union to save. 
Through the storm clouds of fire that round them were raging, they fought, bled, and died neath our flag that still waves. A well can America boast of her freedom, unequaled in liberty, wealth, and renown. She was bought with the price that equals her value. It's the lives of our heroes in the graves we stand round. Leave a place in your hearts, young men of our nation, for these loyal old comrades who are meeting today. They will soon cross over the river to, grow, to join the great army where suffering and trials have all passed away. We've got a lot of soldiers with us here today who serve their country. I'd ask for anyone who served in the armed forces, forces to please stand so we can show our gratitude. This year, we'll be hearing from United States Army Staff Sergeant Travis Mills of the 82nd Airborne Division. Sergeant Mills was on his third tour of duty in Afghanistan when he was critically injured on April 10th, 2012 by an IED while on patrol, losing portions of both arms and both legs. <coughs> He is one of only five quadruple amputees from the wars in Iraq and Afghan, Afghanistan to survive his injuries. Thanks to his amazing strength, courage, and incredible will to live, the heroic actions of his unit and the prayers of thousands, Travers is currently at Walter Reed Army Medical Center near Washington, D.C., where he is on the road to recovery. Every day is a battle, but Travis continues to astound friends and family alike with his progress and amazing spirit. Sergeant Travis Mills is a genuine American hero for his incredible sacrifice. We are forever in his debt, and I now ask Sergeant Mills to come forward and tell his story. Sergeant. Thank you. I, I didn't know if I was supposed to tell you to sit down or anything. I do appreciate it. Can everybody hear me all right? Yeah. I'm a little taller on my, my tall legs than three foot seven than I am actually now. So, so uh, a few things. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. It's uh, truly an honor, and I'm humbled by the experience. Everybody's a little bit worried that knows me personally, my, my father up there. Uh, I'm kind of a jokester, so he's worried to say something, you know, inappropriate. I'm not, I don't think, but we'll see what I can do. Uh, you know, today we're here for the fallen to remember what their sacrifice was, you know, and I think the best way for me to go into it really is just tell a couple stories. Um, I'm not a professional speaker, so if I don't do very well, hey, at least I told you you had it coming. Um, I got a few talking points. If I ramble, my wife's going to clap two times, so I know when I'm rambling, my wife will tell me. And don't think anybody's being rude. She just tell me to move on. So thank you. All right, so for me, the service, when I was 18, I went to college. It wasn't for me at the time. Uh, I'll probably go back. But for me, it wasn't, wasn't, you know, 18. I was wild, wanted to have fun, wanted to get out there, see the world a little bit, and I did. I joined the Army, decided to go a the Airborne, and went to the 82nd Airborne Division in August of 2006. There I deployed six months later for my first time to Afghanistan in 2008 to 2000, or 2007, 2008, for 15 months. Uh, unfortunately, 
Only thing we saw was a suicide bomb run up, and he tried to blow us up. He wasn't successful. That was the only uh, scrape we got into. And then on our second deployment I went on, it was in 2009, 2010 for a year. And before I went, there's a few people that uh, I was next to or around or that I know personally that were friends with me, you know, in, in the battlefield, people, you know, they perish. So one guy I look up to, his name's Sergeant Tyler Juden. He's not from Michigan, I'm sorry, but he was a role model. <laughs> I'm getting a little teary-eyed, sorry. He was a year older than me, and I looked up to him as a big brother. He uh, was the 11th ranked sniper in the Army at the time. I'm so sorry. I thought it was going to be a lot easier than this. He went on a patrol two weeks into deployment and uh, decided that he would volunteer. Sergeant Juden's convoy got hit. He jumped out of his truck, ran to a high position, emptied seven magazines until he was all gone, ran back, jumped in his truck, and a recoilless rifle shot to the side. And he uh, eventually wound up dying. So I, I remember him on these days. I'm not a sissy, I promise. I, I can take a hit. <laughs> but he's one of my good friends. And he's gone now. So I remember him. I'm not as sad about it <laughs> until today. I remember him teaching me things, yelling at me for my strings out of my pocket. And I'm thinking, I'm the same age as you. Leave me alone, buddy. And it didn't work that way. And then I was on to my second, or I came home from that deployment. I was on my third deployment then. And this was just this last April. Uh, I was now the guy everybody looked up to, the staff sergeant that knew everything. I guess I pretended to. Right, Sergeant Major? Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> and then I was hit April 10th. Uh, I sustained some pretty bad wounds. My right arm and my right leg were never found. They disappeared, so that's good. I hate to see him laying there not being able to put back on, you know? My left leg was uh, almost all the way through and taped my leg, but I laid on the ground knowing I'd be okay. You know, my medics were freaking out, like, hey, you're gonna be fine. He kept telling me it repeatedly. I said, hey, hey, buddy, I'm gonna be okay. Don't worry, you know, I have faith in you. So then, after all this, guys looked up to me, and they were really, uh, I was their mentor, if you will. So I flew to Germany, and four days into it, when I woke up for the first time on my birthday, I begged and pleaded for them to call my unit. So I sang them the 80-second songs that I would sing when we got back from missions, and told them, keep driving, it's gonna be no problem. I'll be okay, I'll be at Rampside. Well, a month later, or two, around this time of year, a young private named Brandon Goodine, again, not from Michigan, stepped on an IED, became a triple, and as they were carrying him on the litter out, the guys carrying the litter stepped on another IED, and he ended up per perishing from that. And I remember him overseas telling me he would follow me anywhere, and he would do anything for me, and uh, that meant a lot. That meant a lot. Wow, I didn't know I was gonna be such a sissy up here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So those are two guys that I personally remember and I fought next to side by side. And the last person I want to talk about, his father was my baseball coach. He taught uh, me from Little League from, I think, nine years old up to uh, freshman year of high school. And Chris, Christopher Eskelson, his mother's here, she's up there, um, he decided to join the Marines. He wanted the money for college so he can go to school and be a doctor. And he was smart enough too, <laughs> even though he did get into a little bit of trouble in school and punched a kid through his, a glass window or something. We don't even get into that, right, Mitzi? But someone that was a close family friend, he was wounded from Michigan, from my hometown. He was shot through the chest, through and through by a sniper, and he did not make it home. So Memorial Day, for me, has a special meeting. And I'm just honored to be here, and thank you for your time. Um, I keep going because my wife and my child are still with me. My family is great. The support from Michigan, especially, is phenomenal. And just for the record, uh, I didn't know all of your loved ones, but I'll tell you right now, in the service, we all have the brotherhood that no one knows about or understands unless you're there. So from my heart to yours, I'm so sorry for your loss, but I wasn't there to, uh, with you guys when you, you know, were uh, at the funerals and moving on. So now, like any funeral or any service that you have for them, it's time to remember the happy thoughts and the great things. So for me, I remember Sergeant Tyler Juden who would yell at me and tell me to tuck my strings in my pockets, and I was mad at. I couldn't believe he, he wouldn't leave me alone about it, who taught me so much. It's Brandon Goodine, who was right there and told me he'd leave me anywhere. Or, or he followed me anywhere, and he would do anything that I needed, and I asked of him, because he trusted me so much. And Christopher Eskelson, 
who on the day after Christmas, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, before my first appointment, I had the phone call about him passing. And it was rough for my mom and dad to deal with because they were such good family friends and I grew up with. But like anything, you move on. So like I said, from my heart to all of you up there, I really feel your pain. I can't say I know you're going through what you have been through. And thanks for giving me this opportunity. I am so sorry. I'm so teary-eyed and such a sissy. I really am tough. But <laughs> anyways, hey. Thank you for the opportunity. I wasn't supposed to take over 10 minutes, I don't think, because you guys probably want to get out of here. And uh, not out of here, it's a great day, but who wants to hear me ramble about things? So I'm gonna keep going strong, keep going hard. I walk everywhere, I you know, can feed myself, and uh, I guess I'm the definition of what you would call Michigan strong, like everybody here. So I'm proud to be from Michigan, I'm proud to be here, and thank you for your time. Everybody have a great day. Travis, thank you for your service and sharing your story with us today. We're all inspired by your courage. I'd like to ask Senator Glenn Anderson to come forward, to come up and read the names of the Michigan fallen soldiers since our last Senate memorial service. As he reads the names of the fallen, their senators will come up and place a flag in the basket in the front. In the past 12 months, we've lost nine soldiers. I'd ask everyone to stand to honor them. Senator Anderson. Thank you, Senator Papa George. And after Travis's speech, this is going to be even tougher. <clears throat> Private First Class, Shane Cantu, United States Army, August 28, 2012, from Corona, Michigan, Senator Hune. Sergeant Justin Hansen, United States Marine Corps, July 24, 2012, from Traverse City, Michigan, Senator Walker. First Lieutenant, Todd W. Lamka, United States Army, August 1, 2012, from Fraser, Michigan, Senator Bita. Staff Sergeant Matthew J. Leach, United States Army, June 26, 2012, from Ferndale, Michigan, Senator Gregory. Senator Joseph Lilly, United States Army, June 14, 2012, from Flint, Michigan, Senator Ananick. Specialist Kyle B. McLean, Army National Guard, August 1, 2012, from Rochester Hills, Senator Marlowe. Gunnery Sergeant Daniel J. Price, United States Marine Corps, July 29, 2012, from Holland, Michigan, Senator Jones. Sergeant Mark W. Schoonhover, United States Army, January 20th, 2013, from Plainwell, Michigan. Senator Schutmaker. Petty Officer Second Class, David J. Warzen, 
United States Navy, August 16th, 2012, from Kentwood, Michigan, Senator Hildebrand. Thank you, Senator. I now call for a moment of silence uh, for our departed comrades. If I can have the honor guard come forward. As we conclude this ceremony, you can be seated, please. I would ask the 
you remember the time we shared here together and especially the courage of Sergeant Travis Mills and the Gold Star families. All our freedoms can be attributed in very large part to the many servicemen and women who have served our country with honor over the years. At this time, I would ask the color guard to retire the colors, and folks, I'd ask you to stand again. Senator Meekoff, this concludes our ceremony. I thank everyone for attending.